Mr. Ronaldo Marcus Green, how are you, sir? I'm well, thank you for having me. It's, it's great to see you. Congratulations on the phenomenal job of King Richard. I really enjoyed that. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad, so glad to hear it. Oh, so this thank is, the King Richard is your second project. It is my, uh, it's, I've had a few projects. I just, my, it's my third feature. Oh, your third feature, okay. What, what was the first feature? Monsters and Men. And what was the second one? Uh, Good Joe Bell. Uh, now, now Joe Bell. Joe it's Bell. Okay. Oh, okay. Great, great. So you you're doing your thing, brother. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And and you are uh, an NYU uh, grad as well. Uh, yes, went to NYU uh, about five years ago. I graduated. So yeah, I've been been on a been been running ever since. <laughs> dynamite, dynamite. Wow. Do you think that uh, five years? Do you think the progression has been what you expected, or? Oh, yeah, uh, more, way more than I ever expected. So right after I, I made my first movie, Monsters and Men, I uh, went to London and I did a TV series. I did the first three episodes of uh, Top Boy. Uh, it was a, originally a UK production and then Netflix got it and, and it's become sort of a, a global sensation. And so that was a great opportunity to really uh, dip my toe into television. Um, and then I came back for my sophomore feature, um, Joe Bell with Mark Wahlberg. And then right into King Richard. And then during that hiatus, uh, I actually did another project with Will. Uh, it's a documentary called Amend on, um, on Netflix. Um, and then as soon as I wrapped King Richard, I'm, uh, I'm in Baltimore now uh, doing a six part, uh, directing a six part limited series with David Simon and George Pelicanos called uh, We Own the City. So it's been nonstop for the last uh, three and a half years, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I love what I do and uh, just lucky to, lucky to be working at a high level and, and with people that are, I love to work with. So um, it's, it's been a fun ride so far. Great. Okay, so you know, tell the audience a little bit about uh, King Richard. Tell them about the story of King Richard. I saw the movie; it's great. Um, everybody's going to love it. But you give them your your take on the story of King Richard, please. Yeah. Well, I, look, I don't want to give away too much, but but uh, but you know, look, uh, it, King, King Richard is a story about Venus and Serena Williams. You know, uh, from the time that they're uh, very young children up until uh, the time that they start playing professional sports. Um, it's told through the through the lens of uh, of Richard Williams, um, played by Will Smith. Um, and, uh, and it's really a story about a family um, and how this family uh, started with very humble beginnings in Compton, California uh, at a rough period of time in history. As we know, late 80s, early 90s, Compton was not uh, necessarily the safest place to be. Um, but Richard on uh, uh, Orson Price uh, raised these, uh, these girls in this community um, and they centered their, their centered their worlds around tennis, uh, about raising ten tennis champions. And Richard sets out; he has a plan and a vision for his girls, and um, and that is to become number one in the world. <laughs> and uh, you know, we, we all know what happens. Um, and I think the movie is about figuring out how how to get there. Um, so the movie is really about parenting. It's about family. Um, it's about struggle. It's about perseverance. Um, all the things um, that you would imagine that they had to go through, or uh, you know, uh, to, to to get to where they are. Um, but there's a reason why Venus and Serena um, are still playing today. Um, many players burn out. Many players, uh, you know, uh, careers have not uh, lasted as long. The longevity um, and the legacy that they have left is really. Um, the foundation started uh, back in Compton uh, with Richard and Orsine on those courts, and that's what the real the movie uh, is, is about. And um, and hopefully people will uh, will enjoy that experience. Absolutely, you just answered like ten questions with that one <laughs> with that one answer. Well, we'll keep going anyway. So I can't think of too many uh, other tennis movies. How about yourself? Did you did you do research on that or? Yeah, so we you know we we watched pretty much every every tennis movie from Wimbledon to uh, Borg versus McEnroe and uh, documentaries on tennis, uh, the Boletary doc on on Showtime. Um, you know there 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 there's been a few over the course. Um, you know I, I really don't think about um, this movie as a tennis movie. Uh, it, it it's a movie about you know like I said about family and of course it has it's about two of the greatest tennis players that ever walked the planet. Um, two of the greatest athletes, uh, for, you know, to, to walk the planet. But, um, you know, tennis is, is really just a, a small fraction of what the, what the film uh, it, it really is. Um, 
it was very important to us to get the tennis right. Um, so we, we hopefully we did that and we spent a lot of time uh, figuring out how we were going to shoot the tennis, um, training uh, our lead, uh, our lead actors uh, played by uh, Sanaya Sidney and Demi Singleton. They had a lot of time to, to, to really train and, and really get the, you know, they had no professional tennis you know, training at all uh, before they had ever uh, gotten cast for the role. So the time that they they got on, we probably had six months, eight months to really get them um, get them you know fully locked into to what it would be like. And it's demanding. It's physically demanding on your body. Long hours in the heat, many hours uh, of practice. Uh, but those girls did it, and um, you know it was amazing to see eleven and twelve year old girls really um, you know moving the way they did and 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 really learning. Um, learning a very hot, it, it's a very difficult sport to learn. Um, and, and they did it, they did it very, very well. It's definitely difficult to learn. I'm sorry, I've gotten you up. So yeah, <laughs> there was no stunt doubles? Uh, we, we, you know, look, there's some movie magic happening for sure. Uh, you know, <laughs> hopefully you don't look too close. Uh, but, but yeah, there's, there's always mov movie magic and we definitely used, uh, utilize, uh, but, but m most of what you see are the girls doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, they were, they were great. They were yeah. really great. And the, and the little, the one that played, uh, I think her name is Sanaya, played yeah. uh, Venus, right? Yes, yeah, Sanaya Sydney plays uh, plays Venus. I mean, what a star she is. She really, uh, you know, she, she blew us away from her very first audition. She came in, she did the... Uh, uh, we had her do the scene with uh, with Will on the court with Richard, and and uh, it really broke our hearts. She had a, she had this vulnerability. So what I was really looking for, I was looking for actors. I wasn't looking for tennis players. I was looking for people that had that emotional vulnerability. I had the the great uh, fortune to meet uh, to to meet both Venus and Serena uh, to be in their presence and to feel what that aura was like. And I can only imagine that they 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 were like that as kids <laughs> you know like there's just that essence and i think both of these girls really really possess that essence and uh and you see it on screen uh they absolutely loved each other part part of my process is to to make a family in front of and behind the camera so i had sanaya calling demi like look she's your baby sister i don't care if you live in new york or la you guys are calling each other every day you know even during the pandemic uh, when we went on a six you know almost six months hiatus um you know, we were able to keep that communication going, doing Zooms to to stay as a family and stay connected, group chats, whatever we, we could to really keep uh, keep connected. And and those girls you know, truly loved each other. So you, so what you feel on the screen is 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 something that was a real relationship that that uh, that we started on the, on this film. It was it was definitely genuine. And again, you 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 keep hitting all all my <laughs> questions with one of your answers, but that's that's great. I appreciate the elaboration. How about Demi? Demi was Demi from L.A. and 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 Sinai's from New York. And so Dem Demi's actually originally from uh from New Orleans, and um I think she was doing a sh a show in New York, Godfather of Harlem, uh, when she came to us. But you know our, our casting directors, A.V. Kaufman and Rich Delia, uh, had both she was uh, she was both on uh, on both of their radars. Um, but we had seen Demi in a, in a Nike commercial and she looked like a spitting image of, of young Serena. It was really like a, you had to do a double take. And, and, and uh, so she had the look down and then it was a matter of her bringing her out and seeing if the chemistry was there. And she's such a talent, really. But both both are truly a force to be reckoned with. I cannot physically wait to see what they, you know, to, to, to see what they do with their careers. But this is just such a great start, what they were able to do, how they, how, how lived in, I think those roles feel, um, they really blew me away. And I, and I know they'll, they'll, you know, I, I trust that other people will feel the same. Yeah, for sure. And, and again, you did a great job uh, creating a family. I, I love the the silliness that the girls had. They were almost like, a, they kind of reminded me of, a, I guess, a female Jackson 5 in the earlier <laughs> days, right? Like there was five of them. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, five uh, black yeah. children from Los Angeles, that that would be kind of like the Jackson 5. Um, yeah. it, it's interesting that they didn't all get in, involved in tennis. He focused primarily on the uh, the bottom two. And then I don't want to tell too much of the story, but, um, I, you know, that's, a, a part of it, and, I, and I'm sure you know more more about that. How would you describe uh, Richard Williams, the person, uh, versus uh, versus how Will uh, portrayed him? Uh, look, I, I never, I didn't have the fortune of meeting uh, Richard himself. Uh, I did read his book, and uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, did a lot of research, um, and we had access to the family. So a lot of the stories, the anecdotal stories, came from family members who were producers and, and working on the film. So we got a lot of access uh, to Richard via the family. 
uh, including uh, Venus and Serena and stories about their dad, including Oracine uh, and stories about Richard and, and her perspective of him. And so a lot of what I know of Richard is, is, is from the family. Um, and, and we, you know, we tried to humanize him like, like any other character in the film. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's an unorthodox uh, human being, but that doesn't mean that he didn't love those girls. And I think um, hopefully what you'll feel when you watch the movie is, is, a different side of parenting, one that um, if you give your kids love and if you give them time, um, it's like watching a plant grow. And, um, you know, I think we can all take a take a page um, out of the Richard Williams book in, in terms of that. Um, for sure, he loved those girls um, and all five of them. It wasn't just uh, it wasn't um, about Serena and, and Venus. And you'll talk to all the girls. All five of those girls were picking up balls. They were on the court together. It was a full family affair. It wasn't, uh, you know, and they talk about it in that way, how close they were, how bonded they were, how bonded they still are to this day. Um, and they they were all tennis players, actually. At some point, they all could have played <laughs> semi-professional. Um, you know, there were there were injuries and, you know, there were other factors that played into to why some of them didn't go on. Um, but there were some other really talented players in that family as well, um, including Richard and Orsi. They could they could actually play a little bit, too. Um, they just learned a little bit later on in life how to how to hold rackets and, and, and get in there. Um, but, yeah, you know, look, the, the, what I, what I know about Richard is that I, is that, you know, what he was trying to give those girls was uh, was a chance to be kids at, 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 as children, and oftentimes we want to advance people, right? Oh, you know, let's let's put them in the advanced class. Let's 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 accelerate our children because we think that's great for them. And and Richard was in some ways doing the opposite. He was um, protecting them and guarding them, um, you know, almost to a fault at times. Um, you know, how much do you protect your children? How much do you not? When do you let go? When do you not? And I think these these are the questions that the film asks. And Richard hopefully answers them by the by the by the end of the movie, and through his perspective, we're able to see a father that is, is struggling with that very question: um, At what point do I let my young girls become women? Um, and 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 it may not be his choice, uh, and and I don't think it is. You know, people grow up when they when they're ready to grow up, and and when it's their time, it's their time, and uh, and that's how the movie sort of uh, you know lays itself out. Right, right. Yeah, it, there was also a, a redemptive message um, uh, that, that the movie had. There was a redemptive quality. I don't know if it was an overtone or an undertone, but for me, there was definitely a, a redemptive message. The the, the relationship uh, between the, the uh, Orsine and uh, Richard uh, was, was a bit redemptive. Uh, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, you know, even in, in talking with uh, the real Orson Price, you know, of course she had her 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 version of of the experience with Richard, but it was always uh, very respectful. Um, you know, she may not have agreed with everything that he was doing, but she supported him during that process. And even in retrospect, you know, they're they're no longer together. They've they've gone their separate ways. Um, it was very, it, it felt very amicable um, in the way that she described that period of time in their life. It, it really felt like there was a lot of togetherness. And so despite clearly knowing that there was some tension um, that must have been going on in their, in their, in their lives, um, they never let it impact the kids negatively. They always put the kids first. They always put the children first. And um, that was something I wanted to, to um, you know, respect. It, it just felt like it felt very natural based on the conversations that we were having. Um, there was nothing but love that I saw or heard that came out of their mouth. Um, and that's how we wanted to portray it. Um, I'm sure that there were things that we don't know about that didn't make the film. But, you know, this was our version of what we thought was best way to, to portray their relationship and felt the most accurate uh accurate to, to us mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I, I i love the story that you told um and how you without giving too much about the movie um uh richard obviously is uh you know taking that i think everybody knows that he took him to tennis play tennis in the neighborhood in, in compton it was a very rough neighborhood i think everyone knows that their story should be out um he, he runs into you know some local yokels who uh want to start some trouble, right? And I had actually heard they they punched, he, he kept getting in so many fights that they knocked his teeth out. Is, is that true? Yeah, I mean that you know that that's that's uh, le legend has it that way. Um, you know, he he was getting beat up pretty much every day on the court, and um, but he refused to back down. He refused to say no. You know, Richard Williams was was from Shreveport, Louisiana, and dealt with a, with far greater uh, you know racism, far greater um, you know physical you know uh, 
struggles um, growing up in the South in America than he did in Compton. And so I think he, you know, he talks a lot about moving his girls uh, to Compton uh, so that they can have that armor through life. Uh, he wanted them to grow up in a rough area so that it, so that it can, you know, if they can make it in Compton, they can make it anywhere. And, um, you know, apparently they were living, you know, maybe a couple towns over in a slightly nicer place and, and they and they moved to Compton, um, you know, as part as part of Richard's plan. Uh, and so you know, just just knowing that and knowing, you know, you know, the mindset of somebody that is trying to build champions, um, I can understand that. Like, you know, growing up in New York City and growing up in, in you know, in, in sort of rough neighborhoods or, or around rough neighborhoods. It definitely gives you a certain armor. It gives you a certain protection in other places, and, and and it gives you an awareness that maybe maybe other folks don't have. You know, I can go into different spaces, and 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 it's just a it's just another sense almost. You know, having having grown up in a certain neighborhood um, about how to acclimate yourself to certain climates or to certain certain things. So I think there is a mentality um, when you grow up in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a particular neighborhood or a particular place, um, that's just part of you. You know, my mother, my, my mother's from the South Bronx and like, I still feel like I have some of that in the way she raised me. And I'm like, but mom, we don't live in it. We don't live there anymore. Like we, you know, we don't need to put locks on the windows and you know, like, we don't need to do the same, you know, but, but her mindset is, you know, she doesn't take the subway because she would get robbed. Like she still thinks that way. There's still that mentality. And I think, um, you know, it, 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 it certainly helps. It helps, um, you know, it's, it, you know, with sports and, and being able to protect yourself in certain situations and, um, you know, give you a mentality, uh, mental toughness. We see it with, uh, I think more so with Serena. I've seen a few of her matches and I'm like, <laughs> wow, I, I get kind of like, whoa. <laughs> she's about to go to work on somebody. and She's, she's about to go to work on that ball for right, sure. Right, you know? right, right. She usually she's comes out uh, vic victorious. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Richard keeps seeing, the, he keeps seeing in the film. And I think in life too, he kept running into kind of like these obstacles, these human obstacles. Um, why do you think that kept happening to him? You know, look, I think um, some people walk away from confrontation and other people face, face it directly. Um, you know, Richard seemed to me to be someone that didn't back down from confrontation. He liked the fight. He liked being in the middle. For him, he, you know, there's a perfect uh, scene in the movie um, where Richard, you know, where Venus is giving an interview um, and Richard, you know, sort of, sort of jumps in front of the interviewer and... He, you know, he says, you know, don't, you know, uh, she answered the question the way she should answer it and, and basically leave her alone. You're, you know, I'm trying to instill confidence in my kids and you can't cross that line. And I think for Richard, a lot of it, you know, as he did many times with the guys on the court, many times with uh, the agents that he meets throughout the film or the coaches, anybody that you know, sort of stepped in that way of, uh, you know, he was, he was willing and ready to, to confront those things. But I think he was really confronting his own demons. And I think what Will Smith did so well was really, you know, channel and, and tune into that, um, into, into that performance. Um, but Richard was also sort of a lovable and, and friendly guy, would tell stories. And I think Will's sort of, you know, softness, he's got such a touch, um, when it comes to that, to make that role so layered and, and to really bring that out, you know, to bring out those um, Richardisms, uh, as I would call it, um, I think Will did such a such a phenomenal job, really, really uh, keying in on those on those things. He's a very complicated man with a complex journey, um, and uh, you know, it, it takes a very brilliant actor to be able to get all those levels. And I think Will, you know, Will, Will really, uh, you know, really channeled him, and and I think he, he delivers a superb perform performance. For sure, for sure. And I, and this is an obvious question. It was an obvious answer. How was it working with Will Smith? You mentioned he had worked with him prior to this. So I'm, I'm assuming he had already had you pegged. Look, look, yeah, you know, look, Will um, is a consummate professional. And um, when I met him from the very first time I met him, it's all about preparation for Will. And Will demanded excellence as he, as, and it was so clear um, with the amount of time that he prepped for the role um, and how he gets people to galvanize around an idea. Will is, um, he's really was spectacular to work with, not, not, not only just, you know, in the role of Richard Williams, but how he, he manages 
being Will Smith. You know, there's, is, there's no mistake when he walks on set that it's Will, but then he disappears. And somehow, you know, how do you, how do you go from Will and, you know, trailers and, and all this stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, he's, he's talking to the grips. He's talking to the, the ACs. He's talking to, and, and he completely disappears um, to the, to the point where it's, you're not uncomfortable. He disarms everybody immediately. And, um, and that was, uh, you know, that was for me working with, with somebody of his stature was really incredible to see the level of respect that he gives to, to all the crew members, um, you know, to, to the cast members um, and, and the way he works with casts, you know, everybody levels up when it's Will. And, and, and as you can see, I think there's some really, really strong performances in, in this film. And I think it's because Will demands that excellence. And when he's on the court, so to speak, all of a sudden, you know, people come to play, you know, it, it, it's Will Smith and I want my A game. And he, he brings that by virtue of being who he is. Um, but I think, you know, it, you know, the magic trick is being able to disappear. And I think he truly disappears into 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 uh, into Richard Williams. And I think you know, for for people that are coming to the movie to see Will Smith, they're going to get Will Smith, but then they're going to say, "Whoa!" By the end of it, I got Richard Williams, and and, and it's and, it, and it's it, it's really a testament to 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 his preparation, what he brought to the role, how connected he was to the material. Will is a father himself uh, of a of a daughter. Um, you know, he he's a kid from Philly. You know, he's a kid from the hood that had his own struggles. Will Smith did not grow up in Hollywood or Bel Air. You know, grew up on the mean streets of Philadelphia, and I think having that edge, you know, it really comes across because uh, you know he got Richard Williams. He just really was able to connect to that thing. Richard actually, I mean, the way Will played Richard actually reminded me a little bit of uh, Bandini Brown, which was uh, Muhammad Ali's, um, I guess he was his hype man or his trainer slash hype man, a little bit, you know. I mean, you, you know the movie, I won't, I won't give it away, but, you know, he was consistent with it. And uh, there was one scene in particular, I was like, oh, wow, that's... You know he's 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 in here with the girls. He's in there with everybody, right? He's get he gets in there and he keeps it going. And it's great that it's positive. His message is definitely positive. And I I loved I loved all that. Of course, I was thinking about my children as well. I didn't go as I'm not as unorthodox as him, but you know you got to be consistent. You got to keep hitting them with you know that positive, that love, and those affirmations, that validations. And that's definitely uh, what he did. You know, and I'm sure he was strong in other areas as well. There were a few scenes where I was like. Oh, I hope he doesn't, you know, I hope yeah. he doesn't discipline anybody in this scene. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure, you know, when they're girls, it's like you, you might be a little softer with girls, but he might not have cared uh, or, or scene might not have cared. But nonetheless, um, it was a phenomenal job by by all involved. Kudos to you guys. Kudos oh. to you for, for sure. I know you're going to do some phenomenal work in the future. Uh, tell us, what, what was your your takeaway, your personal and your professional takeaway from from creating this project? Well, look, you know, everything starts from the script. Zach Balin, who wrote the script, uh, you know, wrote, wrote a beautiful story. And um, when something that jumps off the page really resonates, you know, there, it, it was such a great foundation for us. And then, you know, when the actors come in, um, it can really breathe life into those words on the page. And I think for all of us, you know, and it's not to sound, uh, you know, I'm sure every every film feels this way, but we really created a family, um, you know, behind the camera. And I think that was, that allowed us to really be free in front of the camera. And I, and I, and I, and I think by virtue of that, um, by creating that environment, I think people were free, uh, free to really sink into their, into their roles. So, you know, professionally, I hope people are able to see this movie and enjoy the film and it becomes something that you want to rewatch. You know, I grew up watching movies that I could recite the lines to, and I wanted to make a movie that you felt that way, whether it was the girls in the bus and saying, you know, you know, when they're passing the, you know, the grave sites and, and there's just a line, there's a line or two, and there's something that you take from it. And it's something that you remember. And I hope it's a film that people remember. I hope it's a film that lives in people's hearts. I hope it's a film that people can't forget. Um, I hope it's a, a film that parents can't forget. Um, there are some valuable lessons without being didactic or being preachy in the movie that I think we can all take from uh, from 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 Richard Williams and also the legacy that that Venus and and Serena uh, continue to, to 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 lead. And I think that's what's so beautiful about the film is that they are living. 
Um, they are still living their best life. They are still inspiring, um, you know, generations of, of, of boys and girls to achieve greatness. And I think, um, you know, that's just that's just something when you watch a movie um, that you can take with. And 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 I and I hope that young kids out there, you know, get a chance to see this movie, and it can be that movie for them. I knew that there were a few movies for me when I was growing up, whether it was Rocky or Rudy or E.T. that was for me. Um, and, and I and, and I hope that this is a movie, a movie for them. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's definitely inspirational. Got a tear in the eye uh, watching <laughs> it for sure. And like you said, it, it will be it will be that Rocky, uh, that Rudy, which is another film I love. Uh, tell the folks what, what's up next for you. Uh, I'm currently directing a six-part uh, limited series for HBO by uh, uh, David Simon and George Pelicanos. It's called We Own This City. Um, it's about uh, the um, uh, it's about a Baltimore police department. Um, about 12 officers who were indicted on on uh, on intense charges and racketeering and and, and lo lo lots of things. So it's it's set you know sort of a. Uh, set in Baltimore after The Wire, uh, the creators of The Wire. So uh, it, it's a really special project. I can't wait. I can't wait for uh, for that one to come out. It'll come out next year. Um, I'm attached to the uh, Bob Marley biopic. Um, which we'll go, uh, you know, as soon as we find an actor. We're still looking. So yeah, if you know anybody, uh, let me know. We're still looking for Bob. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a lot of great great things in the pipeline. I'm just, you know, keeping my feet on the ground. And 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 first up is really just getting this film out there. It's it's very important to me that this film reaches uh, as many people as we can. So um, yeah, that'll be my job and uh, to, to, to really uh, support this campaign as we move forward. All right, Dynamite. Well, it was great meeting you. And uh, yeah. I look forward to meeting you in person again. I, I will remind you and we'll, we'll have more <laughs> contacts. But uh, again, kudos to you. Congratulations. Uh, King Richard's a phenomenal film. I know everybody's going to embrace it. It comes out November what? November, uh, November 19th. Uh, November 19th. On, uh, in right theaters in and HBO Max. Oh, HBO Max. Great. Right in time for the holidays. Yeah. Great meeting you, brother. You're a right. twin as well, Thank right? You. No, I have an older brother, Rashad Ernesto Green. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. And he did a movie, uh, Premature, uh, two years ago. So if you haven't seen it, it's on Hulu. You can, you can check that out for sure. All right. Excellent. Good meeting you, All man. Right.